Hello, welcome once again to FreezerWorks 2015. In order to start building our FreezerWorks inventory, we must create some user-defined fields that we can eventually use on sample and patient entry forms. First, we have to open System Admin User-Defined Fields. The list view is divided by table, patients, samples, and aliquots fields. Click Add New to get started. The first step to creating a user-defined field is selecting the table that the field will associate with. Hover over each button to see information about the tables in the adjacent box. Once you select a table, the 10 different field types will appear. Again, hover over each field type to see a little info about it to the right. Some field types, like drop-down list, will ask for a data type after you select them. Simply open the drop-down and choose one to move on to the next step of the process. Now we have a samples drop-down list field of alphanumeric data type. You can change your selections made in these first three steps prior to saving the new field. Once the field is saved, however, its table, field type, and data type will all be locked from further changes. Now the full properties page is visible, and you can name your field, determine a length if applicable, and check on whatever properties are necessary for this particular field. You can make it required in order to save a record, mark it as unique so every data entry is different, flag it as PHI so the data is protected, require reasons for the audit trail upon any modification or initial entry, require that the data be entered twice for authentication purposes, and more or less options depending on the type of field chosen. For example, the drop-down list field has two exclusive checkboxes, a modifiable drop-down list and restricted drop-down, while the count type field only has the active and index field checkboxes. No matter what field type you have chosen, you can always enter a tooltip using the text box at the bottom of the screen. This will appear any time the user hovers over the field on an entry form. Some field types require more configuration than the initial properties page. You'll notice that these fields have the top of the three boxes on the right filled. A drop-down list field requires that you enter some values for users to eventually select from. Now we have two drop-down list values, sum and values. Of course, you can also check on drop-down list modifiable by user, so that users aren't confined to the values you enter here. Let's create a numeric field now to learn more about how the three boxes on the right work. Check on define valid ranges. This activates the top right box so we can enter a minimum and maximum value for the field. Let's enter a minimum value of 123, and why not for the maximum 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If a user enters anything under the minimum or above the maximum, it will not be accepted. Now let's check on default values, which activates the second box on the right. We can set a single default value using the entry box, or we can click Define Default Settings to set conditional default values based upon values in another field. We'll thoroughly discuss default values and other advanced field topics in the next video. As you activate extra properties, more configuration options will appear in the boxes on the right. A numeric field can only have two boxes filled, but a drop-down list field can have all three. We talked a little bit about the groups page in the security video. Assign the groups that you want to have access to this field by double clicking or highlight and click append. The drop down at the bottom is different though. This controls which user will have the sole power to edit the properties of the field after it is saved. This can be done one by one on the groups page, or you can click assign owner on the user defined fields list view. Note that the admin super user will have access to all fields no matter what. The color formatting page allows you to give color to field data 
based upon values of any field you choose. A very cool option that we will talk about much more in our next video. The field info page contains two tabs, dependencies and screens. The first one tells you what fields in your database depend on this one for their own default values, calculations, counts, restricted drop-down lists, and color formatting. The screens tab tells you which entry forms have this field on it. Now the field info page will not be useful when first creating a field, but open one after doing some work in FreezerWorks and you'll see why it comes in handy. That'll do for today's discussion of user-defined fields. In part two, we'll take a longer look at those more advanced topics we glossed over today. Until then.